Hello everyone, welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. So in the last part, we finally uh, found Brother Genitivi. And now we're in the temple and we're trying to find the urn, but it's kind of hard because the people are hard. Also forgot to save, so let's save. Okay. Just in case, you never know. And it saved. Perfect. Why does the ah! Smell so awful? You guys, can you help me with this? more oh okay oh hey okay come on me and you Alistair good job who is over here oh man Lil oh wait no Zephyrin but that was Liliana I haven't been this hurt in well ever okay I guess there's a lot more to look at here so Let's do that. So I'm, I'm like getting so much money from these guys. We love being a pickpocketer. Oh, I can't take any of these ancient elven gloves. Wow, I would have loved that. Oh no. I hit him. Just you by yourself. Not you by yourself. So many. So we have to go to the caverns. Because this is a whole... Yeah, you just go in circles. Going. Do you wish to hear what I have found? Uh, what did you find? It is not what I expected. I had hoped for a collection of her spells, a map of the power that she commands, but this is not it. Ah, uh, so it was for nothing? No, not for nothing. There is much of interest here in her writings, and one thing in particular I find fascinating. Here, in great detail, Flemeth explains the means by which she has survived for centuries. A spell of immortality? Oh, if only it were so. Flemeth has raised many daughters over her long lifetime. There are stories of these many witches of the wilds throughout Chastened Legend, yet I have never seen a one, and always wondered why not. And now I know. They are all Flemeth. When her body becomes old and wizened, she raises a daughter. And when the time is right, she takes her daughter's body for her own. Oh, okay. Um, are you certain about this? Indeed. That is primarily what this tome details. The various daughters that Flemeth has acquired. Their preparation and training. Oh, gosh. I recognize all of it. I... And to be her next host. This is my purpose. Oh no. So why would she risk any with me? I do not know. Perhaps tis as she said. The Darkspawn threaten her as much as they threaten anyone else. Or perhaps she believes that this journey will make me more powerful. According to the tome, if the host is already powerful and trained in magic, it takes far less time for Flemeth to... Settle in. Um, so if you died, she would just have another daughter? Not by any natural means. Perhaps I should take this as a vote of confidence from her on my capabilities? Or perhaps she simply wished me gone from the Kokari Wilds so she could prepare her ritual in peace. A disturbing thought. 
Um, and you had no idea? I'm so sorry. Do not be sorry. I am not. I am angry. Okay. There is only one possible response to this. Flemeth needs to die. I will uh. not sit out like an empty sack waiting to be filled. Flemeth must be slain, and I need your help to do it. Uh. Why do you need my help? Because if she is slain while I am near... I am not certain that she will not simply be able to take possession of me right there. So obviously, I cannot be the one to do it. Kill Flemeth? It may seem so. If you think of Flemeth as a mother, think of her instead as an ancient abomination that intends to use her own flesh and blood to extend her life beyond all natural limits. She did not wish anyone to get a hold of this information, least of all me. Now I have. If I do not act on what I know, then more the fool am I. Um, uh, perhaps you should talk to her. And what would that do? At best, I would receive pointless reassurances. At worst, Flemeth would imprison me once she became aware I know what I do. I know my mother well enough to be confident she would show no mercy when it came to her own survival. I must do the same. Very well, I'll help then you if I can. what needs to be done is for you to go back to Flemeth's hut in the Kakari Wilds without me. Confront her and slay her quickly. I doubt she will truly be dead even then, but it will take her years to find a new host and recover her power, if that is even possible. Um. The thing I must have is her true grimoire. With it, I can defend against her power in the future. Everything else in her hut is yours. Um Are you serious? <laughs> she would like everyone to think she is invincible, but I highly doubt that is the case. And besides that, you are not truly killing her. Do you have a time limit on this? Not really. But the sooner the better, no? I'll see what I can do. I am grateful. The sooner this can be done, the sooner it will set my mind at ease. I don't want to kill her mother. Excuse me? What? This is insane. Anyways, um, I didn't actually mean to record this. I just want to go back to camp. Because you guys, I did the cavern thing. I died every single time. I can't do it. Like, I need to get my team stronger. So we're just going to do stuff to get stronger. I don't even know what to do. This is different than Inquisition. I can't just do quests and level up. I don't know. Anyways. Are you sure I can't interest you in this hat? A pair of earrings, perhaps? A cheese knife? So what's your story? Well, if you're really interested, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to tell you. I am originally from Orzammar, the famed dwarven city that lies beneath the stately Frostback Mountains. I was a merchant there, too. Merchant caste. These things are in the blood, you know. You can't just leave them behind. I ran a fairly successful business. Rare artifacts, you know. Old things, grand things. The nobles loved them. Reminded them of the lost glory days, I suppose. Um, why did you leave? One day, a noble woman came to my store. She looked around for a bit and then started shrieking in dismay. Apparently, she believed that a pair of braces I had for sale once belonged to her brother. He'd been lost in a cave-in, you see, while on an expedition to clear out the darkspawn from one of the tunnels running close to the city. They were made specially for him. They're unique, she shrieked. He stole them from my poor brother's corpse. She had me arrested on the spot, of course. No balls. They're touchy like that. Um, what happened then? Well, I didn't steal them. You see, I, I'd been paying these castly thugs to venture out into the deep roads for me. The lost tides. They're full of things that people left behind. Sometimes you can find a treasure. Something worth a little gold. Um... I see. The noble woman, she wasn't too happy with the theft of her brother's braces. I don't know what they planned for me. And I didn't want to find out bribed the guard that was watching me and took off for the surface first opportunity I got. Never look back. 
Fascinating story. Thank You're you. You're quite welcome. Now, is there anything the boy or I can get you? Um. You didn't mention your son in the tale. Oh, yes. I'm married to a fine woman back in Denerum, it's true. She'd give me a son if she could, but uh, that's not likely to ever be. Sandal here. I found him in the deep roads years ago. Abandoned, I think. And he was never quite right in the head. I took him in, and I brought him with me when I came here to the surface. He may not be my blood, true, but I think of him as one. Oh. We left Orzammar. That's right, boy. Maybe one day we'll see it again. Oh, That was generous of you. It's not as if I don't benefit, mind you. Turns out the boys are natural working with enchantments. He might have even been leery and addled. I never thought of that before, to be honest. Happens sometimes. He can work an enchantment into just about anything, however, given some time. Could probably open his own shop, if he knew how. <laughs> enchantment. <laughs> well, he does seem to enjoy it, at least. Oh, that's so cute. Where do we... Where do these goods come from? Not the deep roads. Look, we... We don't rob people, alright? We don't take things from people that need them. The things in the law's tithes, what good did they do lying there? I brought them back to Orzammar, where people could look at them and remember. It's not all that different up here. There are places long abandoned by the humans everywhere. Even more now with the Darkspawn coming. What do you mean? People flee from the Blight with good reason, but they forget things. Things with value and meaning. They leave them behind because they're frightened and desperate. <laughs> and sometimes, my boy and I, we find our way to these places before the Horde descends, and we save these things. I take them away so the Darkspawn don't get them. Is that so bad? They destroy everything they touch. Um, I suppose it's better than having Darkspawn take it all. That's what I tell myself, too. Ah, these are dark times indeed. Dark times, my friend. I must ask, what does being a Grey Warden mean to you? Um, it means I've chosen to do something important. Glory and honor the battlefield. I suppose it's killing me. <laughs> I don't know. Does it have to mean something? Let's say... Does it have to mean something? I just wanted to know what you thought being a Grey Warden was about. Ultimately, being a Grey Warden is about serving others. About serving all people, whether elves or dwarves or men. Um, you mean to say I serve as a protector? As a Grey Warden, you are a guardian of men. Yeah. And you guard them because their continued existence is more important than you are. Thus, it is you who serves, not they. I will keep that in mind. A good king, a true king who cares for his land, uses his power to rule firmly but fairly. He serves his people first and foremost. The king who does not do this, who believes that he is entitled to his power, who abuses it and uses it for his own means, is a tyrant. Um. So in a way, having power, I, I'll say, I don't know if she wants power. I feel like she's the type of person to be like, well, I didn't ask for this. I mean, she just was going to be a circle mage and that's it. I guess we could say, so in a way, having power confines you. If you live apart from others, and your actions affect only you, then you may do as you wish. But if you have power, influence, and strength, your every action will be as a drop of water in a clear, still pond. The drop causes ripples, and ripples spread. Think of how far they will go, how wide they will become, how will they affect the pond. But I've lectured enough for today. I should stop before I wear out my welcome. Okay. Oh, she approves. So he said the right thing. Something I can help with? Uh, I like to talk to you about something. Yes? What's on your mind? Never mind. I'm trying to think. Oh, she has the thing that I gave her. Oh, my pupper! Pet. 
Aww. Love that. I love that. Okay, so we're gonna head back to Haven. I'm gonna try bringing someone else with me. So let's go, A team. Yes. Um. Level 10 warrior. 10. But Alistair's a warrior. He's a warrior. Hmm. Let's bring Wynn. We're going to Haven. Oh, we have to go here, actually. Actually, let's try it. Alright, so I've entered this area. Don't know what it's going to trigger or whatever. But I'm scared. Stop! You will go no further! Uh, who are you? You do not have the right to demand my name. You have defiled our temple. You have spilled the blood of the faithful and slaughtered our young. No more. You will tell me now, intruder, why you have done all this. Why have you come here? Um, uh, I've come to... I am... I have come for the urn of sacred ashes. You did this all for an ancient relic. Know this, stranger. The prophet Andraste has overcome death itself. And has returned to her faithful in a form more radiant than you can imagine. Not even the Tevinter Imperium could hope to slay her now. What hope do you have? Um... And what happened to the ashes? They are still within this temple. But why do we need ashes when we serve the risen Andraste in all her glory? So you can give me the urn then? So you are after the ashes. Hmm. Perhaps there is a way for you to make up for your desecration of our home and temple. Why do you suddenly want to cooperate with me? It may be because I believe in second chances. All of us stumble through the darkness before being found and shown the light. Perhaps through Andraste's mercy, her greatest enemy will become her greatest champion. Huh. Alright, maybe we could come to see some sort of agreement. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Father Colgrim. I lead the Disciples of Andraste. The ashes you seek reside atop this mountain, watched by an immortal guardian who refuses to accept the truth of the Risen Lady. Now the ashes prevent Holy Andraste from fully realizing her new form. They are a remnant of her past incarnation, and she cannot move on as long as they exist. Hmm. Uh... Go on. The Beloved needs to reclaim the ashes, to make them her own again. All it would take is a drop of her blood. Blood carries power, strength, knowledge. Through it, all the power that is held in the ashes will be returned to our lady. Why have you not done this then? The Guardian has foiled all our attempts to reach the urn. He keeps what power remains from the true Andraste. He knows the disciples and we cannot touch him, for he draws his strength from the ashes themselves. You could deliver our lady what is rightfully hers. I could just imagine the Grand Cleric if she were here. Her head would explode, I kid you not. What is this talk of blood and power? And he thinks Andraste is reborn. It is preposterous. Oh, I do not like this. I don't like this either. There is nothing but madness in his words. He is a fanatic and a dangerous one. Be warned, he means to lead you astray. The rewards for performing such a service would be great, indeed. What makes you think I can do this? Many have been led here. But only you had the fortitude and skill to survive the temple. You were led here by Andraste's hand to do her work. The task is simple. I give you a vial of the holy Andraste's blood, and you empty the vial into the ashes. 
Whatever magic was held in the ashes will be undone, and our great lady will be freed from the shackles of her past life. Um. I don't know if I like the idea of us helping Miss Colgrim. Once that is done, you will have earned your place as our honored sister. But I need the ashes to cure a sick man. You only need a small pinch for that. The rest of the power contained in the ashes must be returned to Andraste. I don't think I could do this. It's not right. Rewards will be great. You will share in Andraste's power and be blessed as one of her own. Hmm, I don't know. Hold on. I'm sorry, but I cannot do what you want. Then we cannot allow you to leave here. To arms, my brethren! Andraste will grant us victory! Oh, shoot. I feel like that's important. Okay, let's take it. Alright. Now what? Wait, but there's another way this way. I just saw it. Yeah, over here. Okay. Huh. Cool. Money. Okay. Oh, I should save, honey. Save. Please, honey. There we go. Alright, so I'm gonna end the part here. My gosh, this is so much. I'm sorry. I'm so terrible. Anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I'll hopefully see you in the next part. Bye. Have a great day.